Hello, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me now? I hear that. There you go, Philip. Thank you, ah, Philip. So you here's the microphone, please. No, there you are. Ready, guys? I'll leave the microphone. Okay. Can you hear me now? Ah, good. Um, well, that was a bit strange. I'm always a bit worried about this. Thank you very much for fantastic. Okay, great. Um, this is always so wonderful to see people from all over the world. Um, I would like to shout out to one country in particular, which is the Philippines, because my name is almost the Philippines. So I saw a couple of people, Romy, I saw from there. So uh, yeah, I, my name is similar to your country for some strange reason. So brilliant, fantastic. So let's, let's get started. So what I want to do in this session is the following. Um, I want to do learning about you, an overview of the, uh, the series, whether you're using it or not. Um, looking at some of the tools that we have and giving you some suggestions of how you might want to use those and a section for questions at the end but if you have questions at any time uh please do um oh i see people i know it's fantastic um please do type any questions and my colleagues will be there collecting questions and we can do those at the end so don't be afraid to type i don't know uh, I will I will speak slowly and clearly. Right. The first thing I want to do is I want to learn about you. I don't know who you are. And I have a question. Um, I'm going to just ask you to type into the chat A, B or C. Yeah, just to get an idea. Uh, so here are, which of these statements is true for you? I'm currently using step forward. B, I'm planning to start using step forward. It's going so quickly. And C, I don't have plans to use step forward. I'm just here for the teaching tips. There is a mixture, but I think it's more C's, a few A's. And a couple of B's. Yeah, I anticipated, or double C in that case, um, I anticipated that a lot of people won't actually be using the material, so I will be looking at the material a little bit. But one thing I want to do is to uh, uh, give you suggestions of how you might be working with it. Wow, that was so quick. Thank you for your participation. So, I I've learned a little bit about you, yeah? Um, I also uh, want to learn something else about you, but let me explain this to you. Yeah, people say the sound is not very good. Okay, I will speak slowly and clearly, or try to. Um, what... I have here is the uh, the the common European framework. I have the uh, different levels uh, in terms of elementary, pre-intermediate, intermediate, intermediate. Um, and we know these levels. We use this terminology, or maybe we use the common European. European framework uh, terms, but I'm not talking about language level at the moment. I want to talk about our ability to use technology using the same framework. Um, my idea is that, that we know the common European framework, we know the language levels, but I wonder what is your level in terms of technology? I think about myself as in technology and my level 
L is B1, yeah? So my question to you is, if we think about these levels we use for language, what is your level of digital technology, uh, technological ability? Ah, <laughs> okay. So hopefully my uh, my thing is clear. Yeah. Okay. This is this is exactly what I anticipated that we have. Uh, People with different levels of technological ability. So we're using the, the levels from the language ability and transferring it to technological ability. And we have a big mixture. As I said, I consider myself to be a B1 in terms of technology. So I'm not fantastic. I can do some things. Um, I don't use a lot of social social media, eh, which is typical of people of my age, but also it, it frustrates me. So I don't use that much. Younger people often do. Um, yeah, so, okay. Right, I want to move on to uh, a quick overview of Step Forward Second edition. Uh, some of you have got a high level of technological ability, fantastic. But most of us don't. This is, this is, or many teachers don't. So don't be afraid of trying things out, even if you do have a low level. You will learn through trying. So what I want to do now is I want to, uh, oh, people like it. Hi, Patty. Um, I want to look at uh, a quick overview of Step Forward, second edition. I can't follow everything that people are saying in the chat. It's going way too quickly. But, okay, so I know that many of you are not using it and not planning to use it, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Um, what we have is a six-level series, Step Forward. It's based on on an A1 to a B2 level on the Common European Framework, in the, but it, you can you can find reference to these on our on our websites. Um, and and um, these are not necessarily exciting documents. These do relate to the American standards, the US standards. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in these standards, you can get a lot of really nice information from them. And the components, ah, the sound seems to be a problem. Yeah. Um, so the components, we have a student book. We have a workbook, which come together as a pack. Yes, yes, I do apologize. I'm going to continue despite uh, the problems that we are having. I will try to speak uh, slowly clearly. So I'm going to look at these different components, the lesson plan, uh, the classroom presentation tool, the teacher's resource center, and the online practice. Um, just to show you the um, the layout of the book, uh, there are 12 units. It has a 14 page structure. And the four, uh, sorry, 14 pages per unit. And it is, not, um, it is not easy to show you everything. So what I'm doing is just selecting two, uh, two pages to look at. And just to show you some ideas from here. Okay. Ah. Right. Um, yes, this should say number three. I made a mistake, and I realized today that I made the mistake. Very frustrating. It should say number three. 
uh, using the classroom presentation tool. So the classroom presentation tool is a, a um, I'm being distracted by the by the chat. Uh, the classroom presentation tool is a tool to present in the classroom. And if you look at the picture, it is a teacher inside the classroom. Right now, what we have are, um, are us working at a distance. But you can still use the tool in this particular is based on um, the Oxford Learners Bookshelf, which is the site where everything uh, is based. I don't know if you've joined uh, uh, the Oxford Learners Bookshelf. If you haven't, if you join right now, what you will get is a chance to actually access some free books for the moment. No, no, keep typing. You can keep typing. I, I will try not to get distracted. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the Oxford Learners Bookshelf is the site where we keep the uh, classroom presentation tool. This is an example that we have that I use. And we have two different things here. Here we have ebooks and we have the classroom presentation tool. So we can see here we have the classroom presentation tool, whereas this one is an ebook. So you go in, this is what it looks like. Uh, what we have, you open it up, and here you, you have the, the cover of the book. In the top, is this going to work? Yes, in the top left-hand corner here, you have a link. And what you can do is you can link uh, uh, the page from the book to a platform that you are using. Yeah, so, so this can be quite useful for you in, in your context. Um, and this is what you ha what happens. You go in. This is the page of the book. And what, what I want to do is to show you some examples of things you can do with the pages of the book. The first thing you notice is that you, you can uh, zoom in. Obviously, you want you want to be able to highlight certain parts of the um, of the book, and you have a number of different tools uh, that you can use on this page. Okay, I want to do a number of different activities again. Do you find it easy? yes or no do you find it easy yes or no to write with with the pen tool that we have here i'm not sure if you got the question this would be difficult if you can't get the question uh, i will just see if somebody answers my question <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, okay. I don't know if you're going to. Ah, okay. Uh, my personal view is it's not always very easy to write with this kind of tool. Ah, I have yeses and noes coming. Yeah, okay. Um, touch screen is easy. So I'm a little bit skeptical sometimes of these tools, but one suggestion for you is that you can do simple things like numbering pictures. As I said, my level of technological ability is not. Can you see 
a baseball. I don't know if that was clear. Ah, what seems to be happening is that the audio is going very slow. I'm not going to do the tasks exactly. I'm just going to explain them to you. Yeah, so what we can do is we can use something simple like this pen to number pictures, and we can ask students questions, and it's much easier to get some kind of response from them. So it's incredible simple but what you can do ah okay good the answers are coming through it is very slow yes uh, so my suggestion is using the you do have in the ebooks and in the classroom presentation tool are, are these uh, uh, is the audio now, my suggestion for you is that it might be easier sometimes to do the audio outside the classroom. Let's see if I can do this. At the bottom of the screen, there is a link. And what you can do um, is try is to get the students to do the listening outside the classroom and there you will be able to uh, use your time more effectively. Ooh. Yes, I apologize for the sound, uh, a little bit frustrating, but I will continue. So my suggestion is do uh, using sound in a session um, in distance learning can be a little bit problematic. It does require a little bit of technological ability and it is better sometimes to get the students to be doing the activities outside of the class and the link at the bottom of the screen is where you can actually access that. Um, moving on, yeah, um, we have this particular icon, which allows um, which allows the uh, uh, the teacher to focus on one particular activity, and you can zoom in on that. Um, I would like to give you an activity. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I'd like like to try it anyway. If, if you are asking students to do the listenings outside class time, you can also ask, uh, you can also do some things using your simple microphone. And this is the suggestion that I want to give to you. Okay, I am going to read the audio to you. I'm going to read the script to you but I am going to substitute three words, yeah? So can you listen and can you see if you can identify what the three words are? So I will continue. So, um, so I am gonna read it to you. There are three words that I'm going to change. Can you identify which words I have changed? So let's, let's give it a go. I work at a post office five days a week. Saturday and Sunday are my days off. On Fridays, I study because I'm applying for a promotion at work. But on Sundays, I have fun with my kids. This Sunday, we're going to see a baseball game. We're going to watch the game and eat hamburgers. My son wants to catch the ball at the game I can't wait 
for the weekend. If you could hear me, I substituted some words. So this is a suggestion of a very, very simple, very low tech activity, which will, ah, good. Somebody managed to catch some of those things. Good. Yes. So the activity is that you, that you can do the, the audio because the audio can be different because you've got it coming through a microphone and you might have it coming through your computer. So, yes, some of you managed to catch that. Yeah, very simple activity. And then within this tool, you, you can see the words that have been changed. Yeah, so this is a use of the, the highlight. Yes, and what you're doing is either identifying the word that is on the script or the word that was changed. Yes, it is a very simple activity, a very quick way. Thank you very much for your answers to uh, interact with the students. And one thing, brilliant, uh, one thing you can do is when students are very familiar with a kind of activity, is you can get them to do that, that activity by them using their microphone. So. As a teacher, you do these activities, students become familiar with these activities, and then they can, uh, they can take the role of the teacher and they can, they can do these things. Simple, right? I hope, I hope you like it. I like it. I like things like that. Um, so again, we also have, uh, we can zoom in on different activities. In this case, we have the, uh, this is one of the functionalities of the tool. So you, you have this little eye symbol. You click on the eye, you have two eye symbols. You have one which shows all of the answers and you have one which shows um, individual answers. Okay. Uh, you can click on individual answers. You can elicit from students as you go through. You can uh, elicit from students, write in their answers. And then what, what you can do is you can go through why it was right or why it was wrong. Um, and you can also, in a very, very simple way, in a similar way to, as I did just now, is, is what you can do is, is you can do a very, very quick activity where you, I want you to type the number. I'm going to start reading the sentence and, and see how quickly you can type the number. Uh, I'm going to see the game he's going to see the game with his son and you type in the number uh, he wants a promotion okay uh, they're going to eat hot dogs Saturday and Sunday are his days off Boom. okay that worked Brilliant. Suddenly I got a good connection. I don't know. Brilliant. Yeah. Very, 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 very simple. <laughs> uh, but it gets very quick reaction. So very simple activities like that can then get the attention of the students. I seem to have a good connection. So what you can do is then get the students to do that. They could take over the microphone and then they can type in. How simple is that? Oh, I've lost my connection again. Moving on to the um, moving on to the next page because I am only looking at two pages at the moment. This one, and I want to focus on a different tool in this case. 
And this is what I want to focus on. We have a, a memo tool. Uh, this is a very simple tool. Uh, you can actually do uh, voice memos and you can do text memos. You get a little uh, note on the screen. So here, just using the, uh, the memo tool, and you can keep these on the screen. You can, uh, they, they stay there all the time. We have the first activity. It says, listen and complete the sentences. Very simple, right? Well, it's a simple activity, but essentially it is a dictation activity. And dictation is a high level activity. It does require quite a lot of uh, cognitive skills. My signal seems to be terrible all of a sudden. OK, but OK, what you can do is you can use these memos as a as a whiteboard. And this is my suggestion for you. Um, what you can do. So I, I've taken the activity, which is essentially a. Uh, a dictation activity, listen to the audio and complete. But to make that a little bit more interactive, in the classroom, I've made it into an activity which enables students to develop their prediction skills. I am convinced that one thing we should be doing is getting students to predict before they listen. One thing that students, that good students do is they're always making predictions before they start. Ah, You've already started doing this. Um, what has suddenly happened is that you are beginning to interact. So you have the numbers and you have the letters. This means that students only need to be typing in a very minimal way, right? And uh, even now, OK, my um, my audio might not be very good. But you are actually able to work with this because you've created a very simple matching activity. It is a very simple matching activity. But what you are doing is you are developing that skill of prediction. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully it, you like it. Yeah, uh, people are putting in their answers. It allows students to, uh, yeah, to, to interact. Yeah, I, I am convinced that good learners like to uh, make predictions before they start. Okay, and those are the answers. So you can check your answers. I know that you may not be able to hear me perfectly, but those are the answers. So um, one thing that this tool can do is it allows you to um, show the answers. And if you put your cursor over uh, one part of the screen, it comes up at the top. Yeah. So that is a very, very simple use of this kind of tool. And it gets interaction. Uh, the next activity at the top of the page is a, a speaking activity. And speaking can be a very difficult uh, thing to, to do in the classroom. Uh, it then turns into a typing activity, which is good, but it's not, not speaking. Um, but one thing you can do is to get students to use breakout rooms on the platform that you are using. Or you could use something like WhatsApp. Uh, I am a big believer in, in WhatsApp as a nice tool 
in order to um, get students to communicate with each other. Okay, right, my signal seems to be quite bad. So let's go to a different activity. Um, I'm going to use again the uh, the tool for uh, the, the memo tool. Right. Um, you could, one fantastic thing about working in this particular mode is that it allows you to get students to do a lot of typing. And what you can do is you can copy you can copy from the chat onto these this this memo this a little activity yeah this i wrote this but imagine that a student wrote this what we can do is we can use the input that we are getting from the students and we can put that onto the screen and get the whole class to work like this this is a very interactive way of using the chat. So my suggestion is that the students are putting their comments into the, into the chat and you can be extracting that and using these in, in, uh, on the screen. So oh, yes, there are three mistakes. Yes, let me see if I can type something. I am typing. Can you find? Can you find the three mistakes? Ah, it is going slowly. Right. Yeah, but specifically, specifically, which mistakes can you find? Um, this is ah yes 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 uh okay I'm trying to follow the brunts yes but people are saying punctuation and spelling yes correct you are correct but more specifically can you actually identify the uh is it three mistakes? Ah, maybe it is more than one. Oh, it is four mistakes. Yes, my, my mistake. Yes, the mistakes are spelling of home, punctuation of don't, uh, weekend, and as one of you pointed out, we have a period at the end. So yes, it is. It is four mistakes. Yes, this is, yes, it is four mistakes. Okay, very, very simple. Um, one problem is that students don't like to mistake uh, to make mistakes. So one thing we do need to do is to focus quite heavily on uh, um, on how we should encourage students to to try things out. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Okay. Okay, this should say number four. I realize that I have made a mistake again. Brilliant. Yes. So a very, very simple idea. Um, again, using the student's input, getting them to use the chat and putting that across into the uh, students, uh, into the tool that we are using. So I'm moving on. Um, and looking at the online practice, I, I know that many of you are not, not going to be using this particular tool and the on online practice may not be available in the edition in your country, but focusing on some aspects of online practice. On the screen, um, on the screen, what we have is a link to the online practice and a link to a video where you can actually uh, see how it works. 
But if you're not using this series, maybe it's not that relevant to you. But I'm going to come to something at the end. Right, just to show you some of the functionality. Ah, um, yeah. yeah, how can you remove the fear of using English? <laughs> I'm thinking a lot about that at the moment. It is a complicated question and something I'm certainly thinking about. Um, Ah, I can't answer that question right now because it is a big question. So what we can do, just to show you some of the functionality, uh, what we have here are uh, how you can create a class, how you can name a class and link that to your uh, institution. Uh, how you create a class code and you can put your students inside a class. So these, this is just so. Um, this is an activity. I think you're very, very familiar with this kind of activity. Um, so what we have here is a, 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 a grammar activity, a word order activity. And students get automatic feedback. And as a teacher, if you have students linked to your classroom, what you have is automatic tracking of your students. These are fairly standard things that we have within uh, our online practice. But I have a question for you. Again, a poll. So I would like to know A, B, or C. So um, online practice, many books have online practice. And here are three statements. The statements are, which of these statements do you agree with? Online practice is best used to give students more practice. Online practice is best used to assess students. And online practice is best used for a mixture of both practice. Um, this tool has two uses. It can be used just for practice. And it is possible that you just let your students practice. And it is also possible that you use it for assessment. And if you are uh, working with students in a, in a distance way, as we are here, uh, you should be considering how much of it will be for practice and how much of it will be for assessment. Because giving students these uh, standard uh, written tests inside a classroom is not, not really a, uh, an option. So, yeah, you do have to give your, you, you do have to give it some thought. <laughs> Somebody's put down D as an option. Um, you do have to give it some thought as to exactly how you're going to work with the platform. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay, fantastic. Right. Um, about that. And you have a number of different resources. Just to show you some of the resources that we have here. We have lesson plans. Yeah? And you can access the lesson plans on our uh, uh, Oxford Teachers Club site. We have all of the audio, so you can, can listen to the audio on a CD, you can play the audio in the classroom presentation tool, but you can also um, use the audio from the Teachers Resource Centre. We have lots of multi-level activities, uh, as well as uh, 
interactive activities and grammar activities. There are for developing literacy. There is a testing program. You have the correlations and there are digital uh, additional resources as well. Okay, just to show you, these are the resources that you have for level one, unit four. So for example, we have the lesson plans, we have the class audio, we've got multiple multi-level activities, uh, multi-level grammar activities and the testing program. So lots of different resources. Can you think of, of some interactive activities we could do with students with this while working online? Uh, so again, can you think of any suggestions of activities that you might do with this particular uh, ac uh, this particular resource? Okay, form that you might be using. Ah, prepositions of place. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, 